My name's Matt Anderson, among leading a local social impact organisation and advising some international aid and development work, which I've been doing for some time. I'm also the co-founder of a new initiative uh, called the Social Capital. And, and that's why we're here to talk. Um, and this is such a new idea. You can see Matt and I still have notes. Um, we're doing it in conversation because actually social capital came out of very many conversations and connections with people. And what social capital is, is a citywide initiative that will bring together thousands of people in the one precinct here in Adelaide. Um, it will unlock potential around social innovation. So the way we do things differently around human and environmental issues that we're not doing so well with at the moment. And it will do that on a, on a global scale. Um, and as I said, it started, it started through conversations. So I implored you at the start of today to say, make sure you're meeting new people, make sure you're starting new conversations. And it's those conversations and connections with each other, which, with each other that create new ideas. And that's, that's really how social capital started, isn't it, Matt? Yeah, it is. Um I remember we actually met with a handful of people originally, now going back almost two years ago, and, uh, and started to talk about, could our city once again be the world leading social capital city? Um, could we again take that place uh, that we once held around social innovation that impacted the citizens of our own society, but citizens all over the world? And those small groups and those small conversations of fantastic innovators and entrepreneurs and leaders and citizens of you know, five or 10 of us met together and then they introduced us to more and then that grew to 20 or 30 and that grew to 50 or 100 and uh, now we have well over 200 people that gather together and share this passion uh, for our city and for the world's common good together. Yeah, and I guess part of what we're hoping to do is maybe attract another 600 <laughs> to that group and to see it grow. Mm. So tell us what it looks like. What does social capital actually look like when you're getting down to the very tangible description? Yeah, absolutely. So we describe the social capital initiative um, as thousands of purpose-driven people coming together in a, a world-class social innovation precinct here in the city of Adelaide, boldly driving a new social economy. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I love that idea of thousands of purpose-driven people. Has everybody seen, or has anybody seen, the Simon Sinek talk on the why and the not? I'm getting a couple of nods, I'm getting a couple of things. <laughs> it's been seen millions and millions of times, but what Simon Sinek does is, is he's talking about how you attract people to your idea or how you attract people to your business. And he says it's not what we do, it's why we do it. And to me, that's at the very heart. Um, and it's not around the outcomes of those will, those will happen, those will come, impacts will be created, but they'll be created because we're drawn together by purpose. Mm. Yeah, I think for us, when we imagine thousands of purpose-driven people coming together, we're, we're not talking about people from just one silo, um, one sector. We've heard a lot today and we hear a lot in TED conversations that, that often people sort of exist in their own cluster. We all exist in our own sphere to some degree and we all experience the, at times the limitations of that, um, the frustrations of that. But we're talking about people coming from across all sectors at scale. Um, in something, frankly, that is larger than anything being proposed anywhere else in the world right now. So people that are coming from research and education, people that are coming from business and technology, people that are coming from health and social innovation and civic society, um, new entrepreneurs, new ventures that are starting up, people dealing with public policy, but all the people driven because they want to be together uh, and they want to respond to the greatest social and environmental challenges of our time. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. And, and we said they're coming together, and this might seem like they're coming together in, in bits and pieces all over the place, but there's a very specific plan, isn't there? Yeah. The very specific plan at the moment in terms of where they're coming together. Yeah, there is. That we've, um, we've had the privilege of being working with some really bold people and uh, bold people that have formed part of our partnership and part across that, that spectrum, really, of those 200 people, representing, I don't know, over 150 entities of all of those types of kinds that I just described before. Um, something that I think we really need to recognise, and we've, we've seen the evidence of today in this room, but so many of us see it all the time, that there are amazing, passionate, smart, uh, motivated, driven people in this city of Adelaide doing things that impact people here and across the world. Uh, yeah. So it's been bringing those people together. We've had the privilege of working um, with key stakeholders. We've had the privilege of working with state government. We're proposing this to happen in Adelaide, not any other city of the world, but Adelaide. And we're proposing that it would be a fantastic and appropriate use of the public asset um, that's becoming available in about a year's time, which is the old Royal Adelaide Hospital site here in the city. 
So I, I, I just think that's so, so exciting. Um, imagining that whole place um, devoted to people actually working together across disciplines to, to actually create a new reality for us as, as humans and in, in our environment. Um, and I, you know, I said to Matt, you know, the idea of coming together to work is not a new one for Adelaide. We've got lots of co-working spaces. People have developed clusters. We know that there are you know, tech parks and precincts that, that do this sort of thing. So, but it's more than that, isn't it? It's more than just that physical location. Yeah, it is. So the, the physical lo location is really important. Recent Harvard reports have actually shown the power when people physically come together. So there's, there's really good things that happen when we share ideas. There's really great things that happen when we link up over media and social media and we use ne new technology. Um, but what Harvard showed us is the, the power to turbocharge all those things uh, off the scale when people actually come physically together. So that's really important. It's important in a city often where we, we need to go from being fragmented to being deeply connected. Coming back to your thought before about being connected. So the physical co-location is really important. The physical design is really important. But without having a culture where genuine collaboration and breaking down barriers and coming across those walls and, and where people can work together in brand new ways, without that culture being curated, without there being the glue that actually enables all these people to find each other and come together and, uh, and work together in new ways, without that culture being designed from the outset, um, then we know we're going to struggle. So that cultural curation, that, that integrating everything on that precinct as a whole is a really important thing for us. Yeah, and build into the plan from the start. I mean, I know many of you will be familiar with the idea that you spend a bit of capital on a piece of equipment, but no one there to fix it or no one there to maintain it. Um, and this is sort of, you know, preempting that, that it's more than just the site. It's mm. actually around curating experiences. And, and um, I think, you know, I, th I think you described it in terms of this would be a place where the grand challenges turn up at the doorstep. And there are physical places that people can go to work on those. And there are cultural layers that help that come together. And I mm. think that's actually really inspiring. Mm. And, and I said, you know, this is different. It's different because it's more than just the precinct. It has the cultural layer. Um, it's more than just the, the cultural layer. It's around social innovation. And a precinct devoted to social innovation mm. doesn't exist on that scale. But we are talking scale. And, mm. and you were discussing it's, it's about mobilising the city. It's not just the site. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a... Really, it's a design and the social capital idea and, and the concept is really designed that takes this site and uses that as an epi epicentre to unlock or to leverage the potential across a whole city. And, and there's three things that we can do if that was to happen at scale. By bringing together thousands of people, by locating them together on these great grand challenges, by responding to the great social and environmental challenges of our time together, we can do a little bit uh, of what we heard before, one of the talks before, about uh, what South Australia used to be known for, the, the global first, the world first, and we can, we can be that again. But it's about unlocking the city to work together in new ways, to come at scale and work together in new ways. Uh, it's also about actually having really bold new thinking joined really closely to bold new action. We know that the breakthroughs happen when research and innovation actually is really close to community and, and industry and application and where we can mobilise and activate the great bold thinking with great bold new action in this continual innovation loop for social and environmental change. Um, and really, I suppose, coming to the end of it, it's about unlocking the city as an incubator to see breakthroughs in a social and environmental capacity happen time and time and time okay. again. Which is, which is close to our heart as well. So if any of you attended some of the TEDx City, Adelaide City ones we've, we've run a couple of years ago, um, the TED Prize was all around City 2.0, they called it, and it was really around going, the this, this city, especially medium-sized cities like our city, that's where, the, that's where the new growth and economy will be, that's where the new growth and prosperity will be, that's actually where innovation is going to happen because we are connected. So how do we rethink that and how do we do cities differently? So it's not just about the mechanisms of buildings and transport and energy, mm. but it's actually around doing cities differently. I think this is a, is a wonderful sort of catalyst to making that happen on a grander scale as well. Yeah. And to what you said in the start, which is about developing the new social economy, something that's a new, a new economy. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, when we, when we talk about these thousands of purpose-driven people coming together at scale, world-class social innovation precinct, we also then got to talk about something that happened as a result of that. And it's this, this driver of a new social economy. Um, by social economy, I mean what's actually best for society is best for people and environment and economies uh, as well. One of the things often people don't know is actually the social sector itself 
in our society is one of the largest sectors both in um, employment right now and in employment opportunity and growth in coming years. Um, it's one of the largest in our society right now and that's also the case right around the world. One of the things people might not know is Deloitte did a recent study and they actually looked at the growth industries as far as employment and economic activity in coming years and they actually said that uh, 11 out of the top 12 are social and environmental in nature. So that's really, really powerful. When you then look at the, the thing happening, the explosion of social enterprise and social ventures, when you look at the new forms of social capital as financial investment, what you begin to see is this that there's an opportunity for our city and for cities around the world to actually see that the, the greatest economic opportunity might be right under our noses. If we can think about our opportunities and our challenges and social innovation itself differently. Differently. Mm. Yeah, it's the thinking about it differently. But for me, um, it's also the thinking about the thinking about it differently. It requires mm. a, a, real, a real change in mindset, mm. um, you know, which which is, I guess, part of what you see while you're here today. Um, you know, it's about sharing ideas freely and it's about doing things differently, but it's, mm. it is that different mindset, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Um, well, we found this. Um, the people that we've been talking with and engaging with have actually shown up with a different posture, we call it. Um, lots of the way that our systems and that our world operates is, and has been designed is around this system of competition. Well, actually, competition is the rules by which we play, but what we're seeing is a different kind of posture happening, and we're seeing this new posture of radical generosity. Um, and that's what it's going to take to unlock the potential of our social capital, our collective social capital in this room and in our city and for cities of the world. It's going to take some new postures of radical generosity. Um, it's going to take us to actually be the first ones to break out of our own limitations. It's going to be us that are the first ones to reach out beyond ourselves and keep on reaching out. And it's gonna be us, take us to actually make that choice to be generous and, and to actually be the first to cross across the room, step across the room. So that really has been something that we've seen in a powerful way. And if, if there's one thing I'd take from that, it's, it's to be radically generous, that radical generosity. Mm, yeah, it is. So look, I think today, as we wrap up, um, is an opportunity for all of us to be reminded of that. And it's an opportunity for all of us just to pause and reflect about how we're gonna be radically generous, how we're gonna be bold, and how we're gonna connect ourselves with others beyond our normal sphere. And I think it's an opportunity for all of us in this room, not only to join with the social capital conversation and this new initiative, we'd love to hear your thoughts, we'd love to have you part of it. Um, you can tell us your thoughts at socialcapitalcity.com, but but it's also about us choosing to all be part of something bigger than ourselves. And I suppose our heart and our passion would be that our city and our societies would be transformed as a result. Matt, thank you. And we, we just can't wait to see what the, what the old REH site looks like um, in a couple of years when it's thriving with such possibility. Much appreciated. Fantastic. Thank you. And thank, thank you. you